Hello everyone, um, KI5IJB here again. Just want to do a quick update. Uh, I have changed around the HF antenna situation at the house again. And uh, if you guys um, are interested in, that, in, the, in the first iteration of the antenna, uh, I'll link the video in the description for the first one. Uh, but initially, basically, uh, summarize, I had a 9 to 1 transformer over here-ish on the other side of the house. And I have a, I think a 53 or 58 foot wire um, running from, a run, I had it running from here all the way up into the tree, all the way across, and then it was connected um, to this tree tension kind of with some fishing line, and that was about it. And uh, as you can guess, a lot of the signal got blocked by the house. Um, I don't know what the takeoff angle was. It um, was sufficient to work Canada. This is actually due north, almost perfectly north. So I was able to work Canada, Utah, Nevada. Um, I worked Fiji somehow. Um, I'm guessing it's because of the little angle that was here. But anyway, that antenna worked pretty well. Um, but I wanted more, and I want to work more into Central South America, into Europe, hopefully, things like that. And so yesterday, um, we went ahead and put the antenna up on the roof. And um, in fact, it looks like it did not survive the night, <laughs> judging by the fact that the transformer is hanging down by the antenna, which is not ideal. Um, I will fix that here soon. Anyway, I will roll into the next bit of footage. Here we are on the roof. Uh, just got the wire here wrapped on the other end of one of the uh, the vents that to do something, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, um, and they're PVC, so they shouldn't cause any sort of inductance issues or um, coupling anything. Um, there's fishing line running along there, and that's tied to a rock that's on the other end of the roof. And uh, that's the main eave of the house, which is that eave is three, three, three stories tall. Um, I'm on the, the porch now, and here's the wire wrapping all the way over there. And I'm gonna pat the control box, the transformer, excuse me, um, on the other end of that little corner there. And then uh, hopefully get this antenna up off the roof a little bit, but if not, um, you know, it should be fun to see no matter what. See what it does. See how it performs differently than the uh, the antenna that was mounted about head level in the tree. Transformer. And the antenna is going to get pulled up, up there. All right, antenna is up. Only took a few minutes, believe it or not. And it goes all the way over to the right at the edge of the roof. Um, just wraps around that the PVC vent there. It comes all the way. Goes underneath a couple shingles. Into the transformer. Down to the coax, into the house. Okay, we are back in the office. Um, with the uh, radio next to me, and we're going to take a look at some actual numbers from this, uh, this antenna install and kind of compare it to the first one we had up in the tree. Um, so I have a nano VNA, and I went ahead and, and hooked it up uh, to the antenna before I took it down the other day and did a quick scan uh, covering the whole HF ham band, uh, ham range rather, and uh, all of you guys and gals probably have a much better understanding of what all this means. I'm not that smart, <laughs> so I watched some videos like last year when I got it, and all I know is, hey, you know, SWR is, is the main important thing to look at right now, especially considering this is a multiband antenna. Uh, these little gray columns are the different bands. So like this is this is 20 meters, this is 40 meters, and there's you know, 15, 17 um, things like that thrown in there. Um, I use you. I, I mainly use 20 and 40, so that's the main areas of concern here. But I'm still considering the other ones. I still hop on 15 and 17 occasionally. Uh, but here we go. So let's see. Excuse me. Um, so this is yeah. This is the, the antenna in the front tree. 
and you can see that it is technically usable on these different bands, but it's not ideal. Um, I know I, my, my radio is a, a Zygu uh, G90, so it has a great built-in tuner, but if I don't have to use a tuner, I don't, you know, won't have to use a tuner. Um, so basically I was looking to see if this would change at all going from the tree, which has, you know, maybe 10, 15 feet of of ground beneath it, um, or space, excuse me, between that and the ground, and then putting on the roof, which admittedly it is laying on the roof for a lot of its run, and so I didn't know if there was going to be some weird, you know, detuning things going on, because I do have, um, I believe they call it radiant barrier underneath the shingles, and so it's like that kind of thin foil, because I do live in Texas and it does get very hot here, uh, it's a newer house, and so they have that um, in the attic. So that's like the last line of defense for, for heat. And so I don't know if that's going to interact at all with it, with the antenna, but here we go. So this is the old antenna, and here is the new antenna. Sorry, I'm trying to get this to flip back and forth really quickly, but it's not really working. Turn on roof. There we go. All right. So if you can see, front tree, roof, front tree, roof. There we go. Okay. So this is before, this is after, before, after before, after, before, after. So, you get the idea. Well, if you look, massive, massive dip after 40 meters, or sorry, spike after 40 meters here, and then I dropped pretty low. Um, so this is still usable, I think. Um, I consider usable under something like three, uh, SWR about three. So it's still totally fine, but it's just not as efficient, right? Well, look at it now. So something happened to the antenna that was great. <laughs> Um, uh, I don't really know how, how this was changed by, by moving it up higher but closer to other objects. Um, that's kind of interesting, but it's a great result in my book, uh, at least from a, from a, you know, 30,000 foot level. So basically I can use the entire range without a tuner at this point if I wanted to. Um, and this also means that I'm not getting as high a losses in the actual coax line feeding the antenna, which is really the important part here. Because even with my antenna tuner, quote unquote antenna tuner on the radio, I'm still losing all of that power as heat on the line. So the lower, is, I mean, the, lower the better. So let's go ahead and move over to some actual data from contacts. Okay, so here is PSK Reporter. Um, yeah, these are just all the spots um, from other people running, in this case, FT8, because that's what I've, I've selected, and that's generally what I run in these modes. Um, anyway, so these are all the spots that I've gotten, and this was the old antenna that was out in the tree. Um, and uh, so you can see it's pretty good coverage. I mean, from, <laughs> from a, a, a purely uh, biased point of view, that looks pretty good for just an antenna in a tree. And of course, there's dead spots here, but it's probably because it's the Amazon, I think, and it's Sahara and things like that. And even up here, there's, you know, there has to be someone there to spot you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, these less populated areas, probably not going to see a lot of hits. Um, but yeah, so so Europe looks pretty good and got Australia and um, different parts of Asia looking pretty decent. And uh, so this was, like I said, after operating for a few days, a bunch of different um, bands, and uh, so so that was the old antenna, and this is the new antenna. Um, so right off the bat, this is so this is less than 24 hours. So I put this up actually right at 24 hours, I believe. Um, but I have not been operating continuously. But look at the difference already from from what I can see. It looks like there's a lot more, um, yeah, up in this area, a lot more people uh, spotting me. There are actually people that have spotted me um, on the, uh, the getting close to like the western coast of Africa down here, uh, South Africa down in, in this area, um, even in the Middle East, which is really really cool. And um, I saw some some Asiatic Russia and European Russia um, stations on Grid Tracker uh, last night, which is really neat. And actually, I was able to make a 40 meter contact with um, a gentleman in Japan, as well as a contact on 40 meters with someone in Portugal early, early, early this morning, uh, within a span of, I don't know, maybe maybe 20, 30 minutes, which was really cool. 
And uh, so, I mean, I was not able to do that with the other antenna. And so I think that definitely has something to do with getting it higher up off the ground. And because uh, up on the eve of the house, you can see the horizon all the way around. Um, you still have, you know, power lines and, and, you know, all these home electronics and things like that. But um, I feel like just even getting a view of the horizon period is going to really going to help with, with the exiting. That's what I've heard from other people. And so far, it seems to be pretty true. Um, and that's just with, you know, less than 24 hours of data and the bands. I don't know how they're doing. Um, so as you know, as time goes on, as as conditions change, um, I'm hoping to get more and more contacts. But so far, so good. And you know, this is only the second iteration of, the of this antenna. The next iteration, I'm going to try to get the antenna a little bit higher up off the uh, off the roof, off the shingles, because I do have radiant barrier underneath the shingles because we are in Texas, and that's kind of last line of defense for um, for heat and trying not to get the attic you know about a billion degrees during the summer and so i'm not sure how, what kind of effect that's having with the antenna excuse me with the antenna because it is you know let's say two inches away um it's a very thin metal foil but it's still there so i don't know what kind of effect that has but uh but regardless i'd like to get a little bit higher off the roof but i think this will do it for the next few months until i want to to brave getting on the 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 main part of the roof there but uh, yeah, Japan and uh, and Portugal this morning. Um, I've made a contact with Fiji before, and uh, I think that was my furthest contact. Um, also, side note, I actually heard a station in Mexico City on voice yesterday, right after I put the antenna up, which was really cool. And so you think, you know, we're, we're in San Antonio here. We're closer to Mexico and Mexico City than basically any other state or any other major city, right? Um, but interestingly enough, I wasn't able to ever get. I think I only got one Mexico Mexico contact using uh, using a FT8 on the last um, antenna, and I think that was because, like I said, the way our house faces is um, the antenna was basically facing due north the broad side of it, and the house was blocking everything south, and so getting it this high, even if it isn't exactly seeing the horizon all the way around it's pretty close um it's within about a foot i guess of seeing the horizon to the south it was close enough to actually set it, get a single sideband um contact uh, in mexico city which was really really cool and so this is really exciting and uh yeah i just wanted to share that with you guys and um i hope you guys have a great rest of the day and we'll see you around